Now, can I say that Revelation 9 is just as much of the Bible as John 3.16, but we tend to want to run them safe verses a whole lot more. But I'm interested in verse number 11. The Bible says, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, I thank you for the good singing. I thank you for that new congregational song I'd never heard, but Lord, I'm thankful for it. Lord, I'm glad you're faithful and true. We can depend on you. Lord, I'm thankful for the good special singing. Lord, uh, a couple old standbys we've known for a lot, a lot of years, and they blessed me to hear them again. But then Miss Sidney singing that new song I'd never heard, but Lord, how it exalted you. And I thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good testimonies, Lord. There's so many people bragging on the Lord, talking about the goodness of God and how you've watched over them, how you've helped them, how you've blessed them, how you've been there for them. Lord, that's just you, and we certainly bless your name for how we got to hear people exalt you. Lord, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And tonight, many did, and thank you for that. And Lord, thank you for the Word of God. I'm thankful we got a Bible. Thankful, Lord, we've got God's holy Word, that, Lord, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path that leads us in the ways of righteousness. I'm glad we got a Bible that, Lord, shows us things that have happened in the past and things that are going on right now and even things that are going to happen in the future. And God, I'm glad that the Bible was pinned down through the Holy Ghost using holy men of old. And God, I'm glad that it's impossible for God to lie. And God, we can look into your truth and we can have complete assurance because, Lord, we know that you preserved it for this very day. Now, Father, I pray that you'd meet every need of every heart. I pray as Christian has already prayed. Lord, if there's somebody that has drifted, not where they once were, I pray by the final amen of this service, they'd be in the center of the will of God. I pray, Father, for those that, Lord, are serving you faithfully, but maybe suffering a hard time, or maybe going through something, or facing something, I pray they'd gain assurance tonight. I certainly pray if there's somebody here tonight that are strangers to the grace of God, lost without the Lord, that tonight would be the night of their salvation. Lord, I realize your people have had to face this old world, and they've had to face uh, the flesh and face the devil this week. And God, I realize that some of them are here tonight in body, but Lord, they had to limp in, and Lord, they've uh, faced much adversity. Some maybe came in, and Lord, they're... Their hearts are low, and some may be not feeling well in body. But, Lord, they found themselves in the house of God. And, Lord, I pray that now you would do what only you can do. You would refresh them. Lord, you would strengthen them. Lord, you'd do a work in their lives even this very hour. Now, Father, I've, I've confessed. I've been transparent. Lord, I haven't wanted to preach this message. Lord, you gave it to me. And, Lord, I know it's true. And Lord, I know there's nothing in here that's going to hurt anybody. But Lord, it's just one of those messages I'm not real excited about. But Lord, as Brother Phil quoted a minute ago, we've got to be instant in season, out of season. Lord, you gave this message because somebody needs to hear it. And so Father, help me to put my whole heart in delivering what you delivered to me. And God, use this unworthy vessel. And God, get glory to your name. We'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. I want to look at this verse and pull some things out, and we'll get to the message in a minute. But I want you to notice the principal figure in this verse. He's the principal of the bottomless pit. Look again in verse number 11. It says, And they had a king over them, who? These locusts that come out of the ground, destroying the... Uh, uh, mankind. They had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. You say, who is this king? Who is this principal figure? Well, flip over a page there about Revelation chapter number 12. In Revelation chapter number 12, we find in verse number 3, the Bible says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, 
And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns uh, upon his head, and his tail drew the third part of the stars uh, of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Uh, can I say that this red dragon, this uh, uh, king of the bottomless pit, uh, you and I know him as, as Satan, as uh, the old devil, as uh, sorry no good sloughfoot, uh, as the prince and power of the air. Uh, 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 we find in Revelation 12 it mentions a third of the stars with him. Uh, uh, can I say that when uh, he was cast out of uh, heaven, you have to understand, and eternity past he was Lucifer the anointed cherub you find that uh, in Ezekiel 28 you also find it in Isaiah 14 uh, he was uh, more beautiful than any angel uh, and can I say that he was the minister of music in heaven uh, he had an orchestra that came out of him uh, don't ask me to explain it just read Ezekiel uh, 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 28 you'll find out uh, he had timbrels and he had trumpets he had all kinds of music that came from him and he led uh, uh, all the praise and all the worship in heaven and eternity past uh, but he got lifted up in pride uh, because he had more talent uh, and because he was more beautiful than any other angel uh, uh, he thought he was better than the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and he wanted to exalt himself above the Lord uh, and the Lord cast him out of heaven uh, he lost his first estate uh, and when he did, a third of the stars came with him. Those stars are ministers, angels. So we find that this king of the bottomless pit, he also has an army. And so we find the principle of Revelation 9, 11. Now notice his past. Look again at verse 11. It said, They had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottom, bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. Now, if you've got a reference Bible, you'll find that somewhere in that reference Bible is going to tell you that Abaddon and Apollyon mean the same thing. One's just from the Hebrew tongue and one's from the Greek tongue. They actually don't mean the same thing. Can I say the Hebrew version, Abaddon, talks about his past. And can I say that the name Abaddon means destruction. And can I say everywhere he's ever been, you'll find a path of destruction. If we go to the garden, we'll find that there was destruction in the garden. God made a perfect place, uh, and he made a beautiful place called Eden. Uh, and he formed man from the dust of the earth, uh, and he breathed man uh, in the nostrils of man, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Uh, he made man in his own image, uh, and man named everything in the garden. He named every beast, uh, and man was put over the garden, uh, but man was left empty, uh, and God took man uh, and put him to sleep and removed a rib from from man uh, and made a woman made him a help meet uh, and fellas we ought to appreciate the good help meet God has blessed us with uh, brother Bob what a blessing 38 years you've had with Miss Sherry uh, brother Bob what a blessing over 50 years with Miss Sonny uh, what a blessing God gave me Miss Annette for 34 years uh, uh, listen uh, uh, these ladies that deserve special crowns in heaven uh, putting up with us sorry no good men all these years uh, and I'm not even going to ask you how many of you remembered Valentine's Day yesterday? I ain't going to get on the end of that. Uh, uh, but listen, the devil, uh, he got in the garden uh, and he tempted Eve uh, and he caused Eve to sin against God uh, and Eve caused Adam to sin against God uh, and hey, this perfect environment uh, was done away with. Uh, and can I say, flowers that once bloomed for their beauty uh, now produce thorns and thistles. Uh, can I say disease came into the world? Uh, can I say sin came into the world? Uh, do you realize in a garden if there was such a thing as a mosquito, it wouldn't have stung you? Uh, can I help you with something? Uh, uh, now venom's coming to the world. Uh, now filth is coming to the world. Uh, why? It's a path uh, of abandon. Uh, uh, the sorry no good devils had a past of destruction. Amen. We see his past. But we also see his present. Apollyon deals with his present. 
If Abaddon means destruction, Apollyon means destroyer. He's not done destroying. If uh, 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 those two names meant the same, that means he's finished. No, he's got a, a history and a heritage of destruction, but he's still destroying. Mm -hmm. Can I say John 10, 10, Jesus said, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, kill, and destroy. And can I say, he's got one agenda, and that's to destroy. He wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to destroy your family's family. Uh, he wants to destroy this church and every church. Uh, hey, listen, uh, whatever that is going on down there in Asbury College, he wants to destroy that. Uh, he wants to destroy the Caribbean, Brother Sammy. Uh, he, anything in his path he wants to destroy. The only thing he wants to preserve is wickedness. Hmm? Hmm. Can I say, the sorry no good devil, we are not ignorant of his devices. He has used the same methods since Eve. Can I say he destroys through deception? John 8, 44 says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. He's never going to tell you the truth. At best, he's going to tell you a partial truth mixed with a lie. Mm. And I say he's a deceiver. He destroys through deception. He also destroys through discord. The devil wants to divide. He never wants to unite. It's amazing. The Holy Ghost unites. The devil wants to divide. He wants to divide this church right down the middle. He wants to divide your family. He wants to divide this country. He wants to divide everywhere he can. You give him an inch, he's taking a mile. He's about sowing discord. Proverbs 6.14 says, uh, Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. He wants to divide. He doesn't want anybody thriving in the blessings of God. He destroys through deception. He destroys through discord. And he destroys through domination. You hear me and hear me well. He seeks to intimidate you. That's why so many of you never get victory. You're constantly saying, well, I'm not worthy. In your sin, you're not. But if you've been saved by the grace of God, you've been robed in His righteousness, and through the name of Jesus Christ, you've been made worthy. I've preached that to no end. But you still get up and think, God, God I, I don't deserve the blessings of God, and God, I'm not worthy, and, and I'm so weak. And I'm so... You're right where the devil wants you. Because he's the one that intimidates you. You show me anywhere in the New Testament where Jesus intimidates his children to feel unworthy. He doesn't. He doesn't call you a lower class citizen. He calls you a saint. He calls you a joint heir to His throne. He tells you that you are part of Him, and He is part of you. Do you think Jesus thinks He's unworthy? You have been saved by the marvelous grace of God. That old man that deserved to go to hell was done away with through the blood of Jesus Christ. And what makes you feel like you're not worth anything is the sorry no good devil. He seeks to intimidate, intimidate you so he can manipul manipulate you. That's why you don't have victory. You're being manipulated by the devil. You're listening to false doctrine and you're being carried away with false teaching and you are made to feel like a second-class citizen. You know, I've read the book of Revelation. I've read the Bible. You know what I find? That we're all the same in Christ. Right. Amen. We get to heaven, there's not... A, oh, over on that side, that's the other side of the tracks. That's the crowd that isn't worthy to be here. No, 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 no. We're all the bride of Christ. 
but you let him manipulate you to where you don't have victory. That's why when you read the Bible, you don't get anything out of it. That's why when you pray, you never see anything happen. That's why you, uh, uh, you won't even stand up and praise the Lord because you're so afraid that you're not worthy to. Yet the Bible says, let everything to have breath praise the Lord. Hmm. So, well, I just can't. I'm not qualified to do that, says who? Last time I checked, when you got born again, you got sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. And He leads you and guides you into all truth. He don't lead you and guide you into, I can't do it. What's our number one rule around here? Mind the Lord. What's the second rule? Thank you. Never say can't. In your flesh, no, you can't. But I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Hmm? Huh? Huh? He seeks to intimidate you, to make you feel unworthy, make you feel like a second-class citizen of, 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 the, of the family of God, to make you feel like you can't do anything, and that you're, you're just sorry, no good, not qualified, and you don't know enough about the Bible, and you don't know this, and you don't know that. And you're just, so he's intimidating you so he can manipulate you to where you never do anything for God. For the sole purpose of this, that he can dominate you. Intimidation to manipulate that he can dominate. That's it. That's the spirit of witchcraft, and that's what he seeks to do. You know why there are so many people that are dominated by the devil now? Because he knows his time's short, and he's destroying. You can believe what you want to. All the school shootings, all the shootings in the post office, and all the shootings uh, 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 at McDonald's and all of that, uh, uh, it's nothing more than people that are possessed by the devil carrying out his will. Hmm. By the way, I hear it say all the time, well, these are all mentally unstable people. And mentally unstable people should never have a handgun or never have a gun. Well, we got a mentally unstable fellow. Got a whole army. He's called the president. So you take the army away from him, and then we'll talk about taking guns away from unstable people, huh? Uh, but can I say it's not unstable mental people? It's people full of the devil. Believe what you want. The reason that we allow people to flow across our southern border, it's not about getting people to vote. It's because the devil's in control of Washington. And the devil wants devilish people in America to carry out the will of the devil. Amen. Say, I don't believe you. I don't care. You talk to Brother Sammy. You get down in the islands. You go down in Mexico. You go down in South America. Voodoo and witchcraft is more than just something that people play around with. It's a way of life. And those are the people coming across the border. Why? It's an attack on America. America is the final stand of Christianity. Uh, if America falls, the world falls. Uh, and it's an attack against Christianity. Uh, and these devilish-minded people are coming here uh, under the dominance of the devil. And the devil's doing wicked things in America. You believe what you want to believe. But these people have come to our country and these cartels and these people have come. They brought drugs that are killing our young people. They are stealing people and using them in the sex, sex trafficking uh, uh, areas of this world. Uh, uh, they are doing uh, devilish things in our cities and in our streets. Uh, I told you all ten years ago, start watching the news. Uh, every heinous crime, uh, look at the name of the perpetrator. Uh, and most of them are coming from Mexico. Right. We've got a sheriff... Uh, up in, 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 in uh, 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 north of Cincinnati there that was rounding them up and holding them in jail and the feds put so much pressure on him said, no, we're not going to prosecute them. Let them go. Why do I want them to let them go? Because the devil's in charge of them. 
You say, I thought God was sovereign. He is, but the devil is the prince and power of the air of this world. This is his domain. And Jesus left his church in here because the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. But we've let the devil have his way because the churches went dormant while the devil is dominating. With all that in mind, I want to preach on this thought. I want to preach on how the devil is destroying America. How the devil is destroying America. And I say he's destroying America because he's destroyed the fabric of America. The very fabric, the fiber that has made America strong since her inception has been the home. Used to be a known thing. So go the home, so go the church, so go the country. There's been an attack for some 50 years on the homes of America. And my dear friends, it doesn't even resemble the America of yesteryear. The days of Father's Knows Best, the, na the days of Mayberry, the days of uh, 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 having an institutional home in America has been done away with. Can I say our homes lack communication? Used to, it was a given every evening the family unit was going to sit down together at dinner and they was going to converse about their days. Uh, the youngins talked about school. Uh, uh, Dad talked about work. Uh, and Mom was proud to put a meal on and have her family there and enjoyed being with their family. Nowadays, people get their meals out of cardboard boxes and paper bags and we're running here, running there, eating in the cars, eating everywhere, other than around the family table. Hmm. And there's not communication anymore. Used to, the family spent time together. They would communicate. They'd talk about the Lord. They would sing together. They'd enjoy being together. Can I say people look at me and my family like a cult? They do. There's been people here in the church give me a hard time because when we go on vacation, we go as the fosters, all of us. We even con Jordan going on vacation every now and then. He don't like to leave the house. We like doing things together. We still like having Sunday dinner together. We like being with one another, huh? We told Tay when she came in, once you're a foster, you've got to live different. Hmm? You say, well, you're a cult. Well, call me what you want to. We've got a family. We love one another. We'll fight every now and then, but we love one another. Huh. Some of y'all was upset about Valentine's. I had to buy Valentine's for two women. That one and that one. Huh. They both got flowers yesterday. Huh. But listen. Families are a thing of the past. Hmm. Communication has been destroyed in our family. You know how most people communicate in families nowadays? I'll sit at a restaurant and watch them sit across the table from one another, can't even talk with one another anymore, and they're texting each other. He's destroying the fiber of America. He's destroying the home. He's destroyed communication in the home. He's just destroyed compassion in the home. These two families loved one another, couldn't wait to see one another, enjoyed spending time one with another. Nowadays, there's so much bitterness in families, they won't even stay in the same room together. It's terrible. By the way, the difference between bitter and better is the letter I. There's so much anger and so much hatred such a lack of forgiveness and love, no compassion in the house of people's homes anymore. I was working some at the funeral home. I used to see it all the time. We'd have to have separate visitations because one sister couldn't stand to be in a room with another sister. 
Poor mama laying there in the casket died with a broken heart because her children had ought against each other. And then they're fighting over who gets mama's favorite brooch. Who cares? People don't even wear brooches anymore. Google it, Xander, you'll figure it out. He's looking at me, brooch? What's a brooch? You've got to be old. You'll figure it out. Uh, the homes are being destroyed because lack of communication, lack of compassion. No used to. Even if you had a knucklehead for a relative that messed up, you still loved them. Still tried to help them. Can I say? Their homes are lacking commitments. They had no idea what I was preaching on. They'd been married 38 years. You know why that's an oddity? Because people don't stay married 38 years anymore. It's probably less now. The last time I looked up the statistic, the average marriage, 60% of the homes in America end in divorce within the first three years. It's because they enter the marriage thinking, well, if it don't work out, I'll just get me another one. You see, you go back 50 years ago, that wasn't even a thought process. When you said, I do, it was until death did you part. Now listen, I know we got folks in here that have been divorced. I'm not throwing off on you. There are some biblical reasons to divorce. Can I say there are also situations you can't stay married to somebody that's not going to stay married to you. Hmm. Uh not throwing off on you if you had a situation, a bad experience, and if it didn't work out for you. But I'm telling you, the mindset the devil has sown in the hearts of young people today is, hey, just kick the tires and look under the hood and check it out like you're getting a used car. There's no commitment anymore. Those promises and vows before God don't mean anything anymore. Hmm. Let me help you something, young people. We've got a bunch of them over here. If God blesses you to have a mate that wants to put up with you, you need to be thankful. None of you got a halo. None of you are perfect. Whoever you're going to marry is not perfect. Colton, I'm kind of worried about you, but whoever you marry is not going to be perfect. Uh, there are going to be some times you're going to have disagreements, but that's okay. If you learn to communicate, you can talk through your differences, and then you can solve any of those issues where you weren't getting along on, and then you get to make up, and that's a good thing, all right? Huh? She's looking at me like, what in the world are you talking about? You'll find out, dear, it's coming. Uh, some big strapping buck's going to come along, you're going to say, ooh, look at him. Hmm? And let me just say this. Did you not wear deodorant? You're over here by yourself. What's the deal, huh? Oh, you put cologne on? Okay. But listen. Don't get so caught up in what they look like on the outside. You better see what's on the inside. If they don't have a love for God, you run from them. Because the bottom line is, beauty's only skin deep, but ugly's to the bone. You know what I'm saying? Uh and what looks beautiful today may turn out to be the ugliest thing you ever come in contact with. Hmm? Uh, but can I say commitment is a thing of the past. You know what else is a thing of the past? Destroying the homes. I'm never going to get this message done. Congruity. Used to, there was harmony in the homes. You remember when people used to play board games? You know why they don't know now? Kids say, that's boring. Well, it's called a board game. What did you think? Uh, you know what's sad? These kids don't know how to play Monopoly and Risk and the Game of Life and all that kind of stuff. They, they don't know how to do all that Twister and all that kind of stuff. You, you know what they play now? They wonder why dad don't want to play. We don't know how to do all that stuff. 
Huh? Listen, used to there was quality time in the house. But can I say quality time has turned into screen time? TV screen, computer screen, telephone screen. It's robbed our children and it's driven wedges in the homes. Hmm. I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to say it. Parents, it's not your kid's fault. It's your fault. You're the parent. You should be able to look on down the road and see where this is going to lead and say, no, we're not going to go that direction. Instead of catering to them. Well, I don't want my child to grow up and not love me. Well, then spank them, tell them no, and love on them. They're going to love you. Giving them their way all the time, they're not going to love you. They're going to disrespect you till the day you die. And matter of fact, when you get sick, they're going to throw you off in a home because they don't want to put up with you because they don't love you. Hmm? I've threatened my kids for years. Told them whichever one's the meanest to me is the one that's going to have changed my diapers when I get old. Yeah. Well, I've told him. He's left some good, healthy competition in our house. It's okay, parents, to tell them no. You don't have to give them everything. You see, McDonald's and Burger King figured it out years ago. Whichever one has the best toy, that's where the kid's going to want to go, and mom and dad's going to always do what the kid wants to do. Hmm? Tell them no. By the way, a little peanut butter sandwich and some chili is just as good as McDonald's any day. Right. Anybody grow up on that little, little bowl of chili and peanut butter sandwiches? That's some good eating there. You know what I'm saying? Huh? I don't like that. Well, you better learn to like it because that's all you're eating. Because we're having it again tomorrow night because chili keeps... Uh, well, uh, I, ju I just, I'm just so afraid he's not going to like me. She's not going to like me. So I'll go to McDonald's. I'll go to Wendy's. I That's why you're broke. You can get a jar of peanut butter for well now. Kroger's probably forty bucks, but you can get a jar of peanut butter. <laughs> feed them for a while. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> i tell you something these kids don't know anything about. Fried bologna sandwiches. Some of them need some wish sandwiches. That's where you got two pieces of bread and wish you had some meat. <laughs> hey, I grew up. Anybody ever eat Spam? You fry it up, it tastes just like any other meat. Yeah, fry up some Spam, put some mayonnaise on it, and have at it. Huh? Tuna fish, man, I love tuna fish. Uh, that's some good stuff. These kids don't know anything about it. Kids, you put mayonnaise or ketchup on it, you can get it down. It don't matter what it is. No, we've let TV raise them. we let YouTube raise them. You know, we, we've let everything else raise them because you don't want to be bothered with them. If you didn't want to be bothered with them, why'd you have them? He's destroyed the fabric. He's destroyed the foundations of America. I don't have time to get into all of it, but he's, in, he's destroyed the law of America. You know what separate America from everybody else? Our Constitution. The laws of the land. Well, you don't have to be a genius to figure out the laws of the land don't apply to the elite anymore. Hmm? They destroyed it. Made a mockery of it. Uh... It's destroyed liberty in America. Used to we had freedom. The Bill of Rights was there for a reason. We found out in COVID how much that matters anymore. They tell churches to close, there's, there's a problem. And can I say that we used to have the Lord. That's what America was founded on, the Lord. Everybody knew this nation was a Christian nation. Used to the politician come to the church to find out what God thought about things. Now they're wanting to do away with churches. Now all of a sudden, churches are, are the enemy. 
because how dare we stand against this woke crowd? How dare that woke crowd challenge the Bible? That's the way I look at it. Huh? Christians have been here long before there was ever a nation. There hadn't been that woke crowd here that long. Hmm. It wouldn't be that woke crowd if preachers would preach. Hmm. He's destroyed the fabric. He's destroyed America's foundations. He's destroyed the fiber of America. The very fiber of America is found in the Constitution. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Can I say Americans don't want to work anymore? America used to be the greatest industrial nation on the earth. America, everybody knew if they came to America, they could have a better life. Uh, everybody knew if you came to America, you could make something out of yourself. And can I say, labor and hard work's been replaced with laziness. You know, I think the last statistic I read, 70% of Americans are obese. You know when America wasn't obese? When we worked. Worked with our hands, worked hard. It's gotten so bad in America, used to, if you was white collar, that meant you, you got dressed up to work. Now they look like bums going to work. You can't find dress clothes in America hardly anymore because they don't see a need for it. Hmm? It's destroyed the fabric of America, the foundations of America, the fiber of America, but it's destroyed the faith of America. Listen. I remember a time when sinners, even sinners, didn't throw any kind of trash in the church parking lot. Even sinners knew that was God's house. I remember a time when sinners respected the preacher. Now you got people come to church who don't respect the preacher. Mm -mm. Can I say? He's destroyed faith in America. America used to stand for something, and churches used to stand for something. Now the church wants to be like the world, and the world's taken over the church. How'd he do it? How'd he destroy? Well, Satan strives to have folks, first of all, just like Eve, doubt the Word of God. Well, that's not really what God meant. Let's come up with a new version. That'll tell us what God means. It tells us to doubt the Word. Once folks start doubting the Word, then they'll dismiss the will of God. It's still the will of God that sinners repent, get saved. Well, now they just have to turn over a new leaf. God loves you just as you are. Just stay the way you are. God loves you just like that. That's the way He made you. That's how come they're taking a, a, a every, a everything into churches, a, a, a alternate lifestyles, and everything else is a, 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 a filling up these so-called churches, and everything's all right with it. They hold hands, sing kumbaya, get a rock band, have a time, and then go somewhere else. I'm telling you, they've dismissed the very will of God. You know, it's the will of God. He said, "I am be holy, there, be therefore holy, because I'm holy." In our flesh, we, we're not holy, but we can strive to be. It causes people to doubt the Word of God, then they dismiss the will of God, and then eventually they'll deny God even exists. Can I say, man has become his own God in America. Washington don't fear God. People on the job don't fear God. And people sitting in churches don't fear God. Scientists believe they have the, the corner on the market of, of everything and creativity, and they, all they do is create messes. He's destroyed faith in America. I used to marvel when I was young, read the Bible, when Jesus said, when the, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? And I'm looking to see a church on every corner. Some 50 years later, I understood what he was talking about. we got people sitting in churches that really don't believe God can do what God says He can do. Can I say, He's destroyed the future of America. Now you can hold out hope for the great white hope, Trump, to get back in office if you want to. This administration in two years has done so much damage, only Jesus Christ can fix America. Do you realize in the last 12 years, America has accrued more debt than it did in its 200-and-something years prior to that? Do you realize the national debt right now 
that you've got to go about 10 generations of our grandchildren and they'll still not pay it off? What do you think is going to happen when China calls in the debt? Mm -mm. By the way, they're buying up all kinds of land in America. What's China got any business doing in America? Now they're buying up all the farmland next to our military bases. Why is that? Because they're planning to take over. I got news for you. They're not going to have to fire a shot. Joe Biden's going to hand them the keys. Not only him, every Democrat in Congress, they, everything that goes against China, they vote against it. They're, they're, they're all for China because China's funding them. How can somebody enter a, a Congress uh, just being a normal person with just a little bit of money in the bank and only making $170,000 a year, stay five years and come out multimillionaires? Because China's writing a check. Mm -mm. Did you uh, read up on what the president of Ukraine owns? You know he's worth $40 million? You know he owns a place in Florida? He owns a place on the East Coast? He owns property all over the world? You know what they can't find out is what's been done with the money we've sent to Ukraine? I tell you what, it's went in his pocket and then he's giving it back to the Democrats. If you can't see that, I can't help you. He's destroyed the future of America. I'm kind of impressed that the new Congress wants to audit the, the feds and they want to audit the gold Fort Knox. You know, no sitting president seen the gold Fort Knox since Reagan. You know why they don't want to audit it? Because there's not as much there as there should be. Do you realize if it came out there's no gold in Fort Knox, the average grocery store can only supply the needs for the people it serves for three days? What do you think happens in America a week after they figure out there's nothing that America can stand on anymore and you don't have any food to grocery store? We're all going to be living with Jim, Judy, when a deer comes by and we shoot it and eat it. Say, I ain't eating any venison. You get hungry enough, you will. You get hungry enough, you'll eat spam. They got spam. Hallelujah. Not enough to feed this crowd very long. He's destroyed the future of America. Used to young people had aspirations of making something of themselves, having a home and having a family, and being a part of the American dream. The average young person today don't even want a job. They just think mom and dad's going to feed them all their days. If that doesn't happen, well, the government's going to pay for me to eat. Boy, that's a big goal, isn't it? So how do we defeat the devil? First of all, you've got to fight. Too many people have laid down. They think there is no hope. Well, you don't know the Lord. He steps in the biggest when it looks like there's no hope. But he calls on us to fight. Now our warfare is not with flesh and blood and you, you know about the whole armor of God and all. How do we fight? Well, you fight with the scriptures. Jesus gave us a pattern. When the devil tempted him in the wilderness three times, the devil came to him and he defeated the devil every time by thus saith the Lord. That's why you need to have your nose in the book. So when the devil tempts you, you've got a verse you can defeat the devil with. You also defeat the devil by making a stand. Too many Christians cower. I appreciate Florence Baptist Temple making a stand. Hmm. Make a stand. That's an amazing thing, Brother Ray. He didn't tell us to swing. He didn't tell us to take a rock and a sling and to throw stones. He, he just said stand. Having done all, therefore, to stand. Uh, having done all to stand, stand therefore. Stand. Take every punch the devil can throw at you. Just stand. And then you fight with stillness. You say, what does that mean? The devil has distracted so many people with so much going on in their lives, they can't hear God. It's the noise of the world, it's the confusion of the world, it's the schedules we keep running here and there and everything. We don't have time to think on the Lord. 
The Lord's in that still, small voice. When you learn to get still to where you can hear from God, you've already won the battle. Mm. Not only do we defeat him through fighting, we defeat him by having faith. Most people don't have faith, Brother James, because everything they have is based on feeling and emotion. When they're up, God is good. When they're down, God's forgot about them. You got a roller coaster to life, and that's no life to live. The Christian life is to be a progression, to grow in the grace, nurture, and admonition of the Lord. It's to be a steady climb until we get to heaven. And that is built on faith. Can I say this? We need trusting faith, not blind faith. You know, somebody said even a blind squirrel will find a nut every now and then. Just blind faith, hoping everything's going to work out. A trusting faith. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. How do we get faith? Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You've heard me say it a million times. But here's what you don't understand. Hearing the word of God doesn't build faith. Faith, that word hearing means heeding the word of God. I hear it and I do it. Then comes faith. Not I hear it and I've got faith. In that case, you just put Alexander Scorby on and have him read the Bible to you all the time. You'd have so much faith, you'd move mountains all the time. No, you've got to put into practice what the Bible says. And when you put it into practice, it grows your faith. Because all of a sudden, God says, step out on nothing. You step out on nothing, and God catches it. Ooh, a little faith. Another step. Ooh, more faith. When you do what God says, your faith increases. When you don't do what God says, God tells you to be faithful, and you're not faithful. Guess what? You don't have faith. God tells you to go, and you don't go. You don't have faith. God tells you to give, and you don't give. You don't have faith. See, you get faith when you put into practice what God says. When you don't put it into practice, your faith meter goes, whoop, and you lose it. Not only trusting faith, we've got to have a tried faith. 1 Peter 1, 7, the trial, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold to perish, though tried with fire, may be found unto the praise, honor, and glory, of the appearing of Jesus Christ. A faith that isn't tried isn't worth having. You've got to have tried faith, trusting faith, but you've got to be in the faith. We know in Jude chapter number 3, it talks about the, the faith which was once delivered unto the saints, the faith. Ephesians chapter 4 tells us there's one body, one spirit. Uh, we're called in one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father over all who is above all, through you all and in you all. That's the faith. takes fight takes faith lastly it takes fire there's one thing lacking in today's Christianity is there's no fire we just celebrated Valentine's Day yesterday that's to rekindle the fire because you've been taking one another for granted for a year you know what coming to church should do it should ignite the fire a passion for Jesus. How's your passion meter for the Lord? I don't have to ask Phil every time you see Phil. He says, I love this stuff. I live for this stuff. You know his passion. Do people know your passion? And is your passion for Jesus? That fire is what defeats the devil. See, when you are so in love with Jesus that you don't deter from him, the devil has no answer for that. Not only passion, I'm talking about the fire, the presence of God. When was the last time you felt his presence? Then the fire of the power of God. It's the power of God through the Holy Ghost that compels us to witness. It's the power through the Holy Ghost that causes us to uh, uh, to stand up and make a difference. Let me ask this question. I, uh, I I told you I wouldn't get it done.
too so much in there. Where's your fire for Jesus and for the things of God? One thing that troubles me. Isaiah tells us that hell enlarges herself every single day. But you read Revelation 21 and New Jerusalem doesn't get any bigger. Too many of God's people have laid down and become sheep to the world and have been, instead of standing up and being counted as a lion for the Lord. God help us. Where's your passion lie? You know how you can tell that? What consumes your thoughts every day. Some people come to church and then the others have church. It's all based on their passion. When I left that corporate job to take that church in Owenton and I left that more than six-figure income for $150 a week, the owner of the company I worked for looked at me and he said, why would you do this? And it was a simple answer, Brother Bob. I said, rare is it in life you get to do your passion. It's been over 30 years. And there's still a fire. Where's your passion? It can be told on how much fire you have from God on how little it takes to kick you out of the house of God. How little it takes to keep you from bragging on God. How little it takes to keep you from being a witness in the community for God. And certainly how quickly you cower when the devil shows up. If you've got the passion for the Lord and the fire of God in your soul, you've got a little grit that regardless of what the army's doing, you're like David. Who is that uncircumcised Philistine? I'm not much, but I'll take a shot at him. I wonder tonight. The devil's destroying America. It's, it's, America's going to hell quicker than I'd ever dreamed. It's eroding underneath us every single day. Everybody talking about Trump? I don't know if we're going to make it to Trump. And I don't know if Trump's really going to run or not. But it doesn't matter if God's people don't stand up and become God's people again. The only way to stop the hand of the devil is to stand up. And you can't do it without faith, fire, and a little fighting. So why don't you ask God, show me what's in me. And are you pleased with it? God help us once again be Christ like let's all stand brother Clint come get a song of invitation let's pray father we bless you lord I know that you are well able to pull down any stronghold we also know the devil has no domain over your children unless they allow him to we also know that all he can do is roar like a lion but we have the line of the tribe of Judah on our side. Lord, I've even read the back of the book. We do win in the end. But God, we can have daily victory if we live in accordance to Christ. God, help us to have a fire for God. God, rekindle passion in our soul. Send revival to your people and your churches that we can start taking piece by piece of America back. Lord, I pray that this nation once again would be known as a Christian nation. Lord, only you can right the wrongs. Only you can change some of the things that are out of our control. But Lord, help us to do what we can do that is in our control. And Father, we'll not fail to bless you for it. Help your people tonight.
And we'll thank you for that as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.